everyone. It's Sid here from Fundamental Research. And our guest today is Alain Guy, the CEO of Globex Data, an up and coming cybersecurity firm. We initiated coverage on the company in December, 2021. So the agenda today is I'll kick off the call with our thoughts on the rising demand for cybersecurity and internet privacy solutions. And Alain will take over from there and talk to us about how he and his team are trying to capture a small share of the mainstream and big tech providers such as Gmail, WhatsApp, and Dropbox, to name a few. Uh, for the listeners, you can either wait till the end to ask questions, or if you have questions during the presentation, feel free to type them in, and we'll try to respond to them. Here are some key disclaimers. Please take a moment. With some glaring statistics. Cybercrime was up 600% during the pandemic. Global losses from cybercrime increased 500% to $6 trillion in 2021. These losses are expected to surpass $10 trillion by 2025. As a result of the surge in cybercrime and ransomware, the cybersecurity market is expected to uh, be a 345 million billion market by 2025, up from 220 billion currently. Now, mainstream and big tech providers are prone to cybercrime. For example, Microsoft's Exchange server was hacked recently, um, and we found that there is a rising demand for encrypted and secure services from a segment of individuals and businesses to ensure data privacy and curb cybercrime. Uh, as examples, Zoom was recently fined $85 million for misleading users that they have end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, there are also public backlashes against WhatsApp and Signal for changing privacy policies. Now, the chart here shows Proton Mail subscription growth. Proton Mail is an end to end encrypted email service based in Switzerland. Its subscribers increased from 2 million to 50 million in just four years. We believe this is an ex ex excellent example of rising demand for encrypted uh, services. Another trend we are noting is an increasing number of users are concerned about privacy and the use of personal data without permission. We believe this primarily stems from the revenue model of mainstream providers. Free email and messaging service uh, providers generate revenue from ads and data mining and have low security levels. As a result, users receive spams uh, and malicious emails designed to obtain personal information. As you can see from the data here, 47% of the emails received a day are spam. Paid and encrypted services do not have ads and do not take users' phone numbers or personal information. The sector uh, is relatively new, but um, it saw a major M&A recently. Open Text acquired a Dallas-based provider of cloud email security for $860 million. Now, all that said, we believe it is an uphill task to move consumers from free services to paid services. Globex has a compelling strategy in place, we believe, after completing our due diligence, and that's why we have um, invited Elaine here today so that he can share his plans with all of you. Yes, so thanks for watching this uh, webinar. My name is Alain Guiai, CEO of Globex Data. Uh, Globex started its history in 2008-ish in Geneva, Switzerland, where I'm from. We basically provide and, and develop secure communication suites. Uh, we have several products. We have offices and operations in uh, US, Canada, Mexico, Switzerland, of course, and we have a presence in South Asia, in Sri Lanka. Um, I'm going to go to the next slide. Okay, so these are the products we offer. Essentially, we have a suite of secure email, messenger. Uh, we are launching a secure uh, voice uh, system and a version of Zoom, uh, as we discussed uh, earlier, as Sid mentioned, uh, highly unsecure and not private. We're going to offer something called Secure Pro, which will offer video conferencing as well. All these products, the, the Secure Pro and Secure Voice, are coming up at the end of the summer 2022. Uh, we also have other plans to offer uh, secure identity for identity uh, protection tool in 2023 and Secure Home, which will be kind of an all-encompassing home security system uh, with no data mining. That, that's the key thing that we offer protection. One of the key things that we have is we have our own infrastructure uh, in Switzerland in uh, multiple data center. We don't host any of the data 
in third party uh, cloud providers like Amazon, uh, Microsoft Cloud or Google, uh, which protects us from the Cloud Act. And the Cloud Act is a law that came in 2018 in the US that dictates that even if you're, let's say in Switzerland, if your service is on Amazon Web Service, like Signal or Proton Mail, for example, uh, then you're still subject to the US uh, subpoena laws. And a lot of companies and people don't like that. So moving forward, um, just want to say that we have launched Secure, which is a combo of the email messenger. We just launched a week ago, a little bit more than a week ago, the business versions uh, for such products. Uh, where we have um, your domain name that can be hosted with us. So we're going to launch with small businesses. So we have a plethora of product that is, uh, that is ready for the consumer and businesses. The market, uh, especially in the US, we're going to focus just now on the US for now. Uh, the addressable market is at least 70 million consumers um, and business employees. Uh, these are mostly privacy enthusiasts, conservative libertarians, uh, that don't want to have their data mined. They're kind of tired of getting that data out there. Uh, they're really big into their privacy. And for a small business, uh, small businesses don't have the resources of big enterprise to have their own IT team. So they really uh, suffer a lot when they suffer a breach. Um, every week, basically, there's a breach, mostly in the Microsoft um, Exchange Online, Exchange Server. Those are the email server. You have teams, you have people using DocuSign to steal credentials of Microsoft logins. I mean, it's just uh, all of this happens because these big tech services are integrated to each other and uh, very weak in security, as Sid mentioned, because they all data mine your data, which they do resell. Uh, these, this is documented articles every month, so I'm not going to get into it, but these are documented facts. So what's important to us is to know what's our market. So besides the, the global market right now, which is close to $180 billion uh, or more moving in 2027, just for the cybersecurity service market, uh, the global prote uh, projection is, is reaching $146 million, uh, billion in 2022. We have about 30 million small business we plan to target in the US and the 70 million users, which are every day buying our product as we speak. Uh, the reason is 80% of the emails, 80% um, of the hacks uh, come through emails, uh, phishing attacks, spear phishing, all sorts of things like that. Don't want to get too uh, technical in here, but essentially whether you're a business or a consumer, um, about 94% of all breach, even in infrastructure, go through email because some of these companies, these hackers look at a company's email for several months and they try to find a weak point to go into um, getting some credentials or things like that to go into an infrastructure of a business, a big company. But when a small business or regular mid-sized business suffers a hack, uh, IBM came up with a study that they basically lose the equivalent of $7 million of existing or potential business loss. So that's a huge cost. Um, our products are affordable. Um, I'm going to open a quick window here. Uh, we have also this thing called Secure Suite, which is a document management suite. Uh, it's a version of a Dropbox, a password manager, and an email rolled into one. Uh, if you go to secure.com, you will see our pricing for individuals. It's for the messenger is $5 a month. The mail alone is 7 and the combo is 10. We are for 100 gig of storage, which is enormous um, with multiple redundancies. The businesses are a little bit more per user because they also can host their business domain. What's unique with what we do is that we also have a technology called uh, Secure Send, Secure Reply, uh, which basically lets a user send an email to somebody who is not a secure user and have the recipient being able to get that email and reply back. And none of that whole communication is out in the open internet. Essentially, both parties connect to our servers in Switzerland. Uh, same thing with the messenger. We're the only company in the world that lets you essentially invite someone who doesn't have secure uh, via text or email. You can text someone 
and say, hey, I want to chat with you. The recipient clicks, it opens a secure uh, window on their phone or desktop, and they can chat with you. When the chat is over, you basically terminate it. So these are little uh, fun things that we do. I encourage everyone to go to secure.com and get to know more about it. Now about our uh, roadmap, uh, really quickly. So Q1 of this year, we launch our business services, our chat by invite. Uh, we, have, um, we have been approved for an OTC QX listing. Uh, it's a matter of probably a, a couple, two, three weeks now, and we will upgrade to OTC QX. We also, um, this is public info because I've done a few interviews about it. We have decided to make a move to uplist to NASDAQ and we have had several offers from investment banks. We have selected one and we have a path uh, that we're moving forward. Um, there won't be any big announcement until the NASDAQ approval is fully complete. And three days later, we do the whole uplisting with the financing. What it means for us is that it comes with a very sizable amount of funds. And now that we have a regular uh, consumer and business product and customers coming daily, we have a cost of acquisition that we know how much it costs for us to get a customer. In Q2, we plan to finish our email application, uh, which will have the secure sense, secure reply. Uh, we plan to finish this by the end of May. This will be a game changer because essentially it will be so easy for a consumer and business to just sign up, download, just like if they use Gmail, except without the data mining, higher security and all the privacy and also the secure send feature that we have, which has multiple features. You can do a bunch of things with our email. Um, I'm not gonna get too much into it right now. Uh, we are launching in South Asia and Latin America. We have uh, signed a contract with America Mobile, which is the largest telecom in Latin America. Uh, they are starting to launch Secure Messenger in Mexico. We believe that next year we will move to Colombia as well with them. We have two other distributors as well in Colombia uh, and Mexico, and we're doing these launches as we speak. So I would say Q2, Q3 is gonna start. In uh, South Asia, we have a contract with um, Dialog Axiata. It's the largest telecom operator in Sri Lanka. It is part of the Axiata Group, the largest South Asian telecom operator uh, in South Asia with 150 million subscribers. We're completing an integration, and I believe in Q2, it will start the sales over there as well. These are great markets and all of the cost has been done. So really at this point moving forward, there's zero cost to us. It's just gonna be top line revenues. And of course we plan to file our SEC registration to uplist to NASDAQ. In Q3, we're launching the Secure Voice, Secure Pro as we mentioned. So Secure Voice will probably be $20 a US a month Secure Pro probably closer to 50. Uh, the target is basically C-level executives, board members, uh, high-end type people uh, that really want their privacy and security and don't mind paying an extra $10, $15 more than Zoom, for example, for the full privacy. We also have a couple of B2B distribution uh, platform lined up. We're integrating with one in July. Uh, they plan to uh, essentially give us referral partners. These are what we call MSPs, Managed Service Provider. An MSP is an IT company that services small business typically or bigger businesses too, and they run their software, their computer, etc. We believe at least in the US, there will be a tremendous demand for our non-data mined, non-big tech, non-open source, solutions, especially for messaging and email. And then we plan to accelerate sales in the small business area. There's a tremendous amount of opportunity in the US. President Biden this week just mentioned that all businesses in the US should tighten up their security. They should beef up their emails, etc., because they're expecting a lot of hack uh, attacks from Russia. We all know why. If it's not Russia, it could be China. There's always a, a hack coming to the US with a war in Ukraine. Uh, these alerts have gone up uh, tremendously. And then essentially we have a thing called the Secure Suite, which was our, the, our document management product. We plan to revamp it and make it uh, enterprise ready. There's a lot of demand for that. And hopefully we complete and become 
NASDAQ listed by the end of the year. And next year, we plan to do more expansion internationally, uh, launch our secure identity solution, which is a, a credit identity protection, and we're going to bundle our email with it and expanding essentially what we have created. So that pretty much concludes everything. We trade on the Canadian Securities Exchange under ticker SWIS, uh, Swiss with one S basically at the end, and then under OTC market in the US under Swiss F. And um, in Frankfurt, for anybody who is listening in Europe, under GDT. So that concludes, uh, concludes my presentation. I should mention that um, we have uh, a very uh, small and selected private placement going on right now that we close April 15. If anybody is interested, they should contact us directly. Um, you can contact me at corporate at globexdatagroup.com or um, you know, just try, you know, put your name someplace and we'll, we'll get your email. And that pretty much concludes uh, our presentation. We, I should say one last thing in terms of numbers, but I'm sure the question will arise. Year over year, our sales are up 5,000%. Our new uh, subscriber rate, so Q1 2021 compared to Q1 2022, our new subscriber rate is up 1,700 plus percent. So definitely people pay for privacy, people pay for security, and the average consumer definitely does that every hour when they buy our product online. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much, Elaine. We can now open the call to a Q&A. Listener, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in, or you can click on the raise hand option and I can unmute you. So while we comp compile the questions, Elaine, um, uh, let me start off with a few of my questions, maybe uh, to get uh, our audience uh, a better understanding of your products features. One of the things I got intrigued uh, with uh, your story when we're doing a due diligence are some of the cool aspects of your products, uh, emails and messaging, things like you don't take uh, you know, individuals' contact information, phone number, uh, the fact that you have um, options to delete a message, you know, after sending to someone, so the, so the recipient never has records or you know, you know, any proof that they got a message, things like that. Do you mind sharing some of those cool aspects? Uh, I think that will really help all of us here get a ben better understanding on, you know, what your products. Yeah, are. it's it's extremely funny that you mentioned this. Literally right now. I got a text, so I have a dual SIM card, a Swiss number, and a US with T-Mobile, which has been hacked twice, so they already have all my numbers. Uh, but I got some kind of text from city management, supposedly Citibank, that says your card has been paused because of fraud, and click here to unlock your account. That's the kind of text that you get a lot, and then you click, and you get baited, and then they get into your phone and steal all your contacts. So. And then, of course, trying to find out if you have credit cards stored in your, in your phone, et cetera. So what do we do? The first thing that we do when you, when you go to secure.com and you buy the product, then you download the application. Um, we offer a free one week, but you have to buy the service first from us. Uh, that saves us paying Apple 30% cut, obviously. And also, uh, we can control better you know, uh, what's happening. So you download. We never ask for your phone number. The reason is uh, the reason why all these applications ask for your phone number is that then they have access to your phone and then they also synchronize all your contacts, as you will see if you signal or WhatsApp, you know, we all use that uh, to some degree. We never do that. So at Secure Messenger, you put a username and a password. Nobody knows that you're using the service. Uh, nobody has your phone number. And if you want to add somebody, let's say another person has a secure uh, number uh, and we have a thing called secure number, they basically ask to, they request a, an, an, you know, for you to bring them into your contact list. So, you know, Sid and I have secure. Sid is gonna ping me and say, hi, it's Sid, can you please accept me? I can decide if I wanna let Sid in my contact list or not. That's very different than your typical free application or even paid ones where I know on, on Signal, for example, whenever somebody in my, in my phone list 
user signal, I get notified without even asking. So there's zero privacy there. And that's because these applications, they go and they siphon all your contact and then they email everyone, text all your contact and their contact and so forth. But as quickly as it spreads, when you have malware, it spreads the same way. Also, many things, for example, if you share a photo on WhatsApp, you'll notice that the media or that photo stays on your phone. We never do that. So basically, all these applications are there to data mine you to death because they make money every month from you. We don't do that at all whatsoever. So that's a huge thing. And that's why we have to charge because we have expensive servers and a service, et cetera. We have to make money at some point. And since we're not selling your identity and your data, we're just gonna get our seven bucks a month. Uh, the self destruct timer that you mentioned uh, is a way for when you send a message to someone, for example, you can basically um, set what, at, at how many, every hour, minute, whatever, you can set a self destruct timer. So I message Sid, and then my messenger is like set to five hours. After five hours, that message will disappear from my phone, Sid's phone, and our servers in Switzerland. We have another thing that we're developing as well, where it will come out, I think, in the next three months, where if I have my messenger set at five hours, but let's say Sid looks at it in an hour, I can decide if I want that message to self-destruct within a minute or 30 seconds after he read it. Uh, there's reasons for that. We have demand for such things. So, you know, our customers are our best uh, R&D guys because they basically tell us what they would like to have. And when it's reasonable, we do it. So that privacy aspect that we offer is just, you know, unmatchable. Uh, also, if I may, lastly, uh, when we do encryption, we don't encrypt from the device. We never use open source, by the way. Uh, when we do an encryption, it's only from the server. So uh, that's why everybody connects to the server. We have our technology called Helix. Uh, this is the secure mail feature. If you go to our website, it's um, it's very well uh, very well put together. Uh, you can kind of see what we do. So we're pretty much ironclad when it comes to the privacy, and we don't send information all over the internet. This is exactly why. All these emails are phished. I heard in New York and even before that banks receive email from customers to wire money in an account. And basically by the time the email sent to the banker, the, the email, the account was changed. So the banker sends like money to another account. There's nightmare stories like that. Whereas with us, you don't have that risk if you use uh, secure send and secure reply. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Lane, for that. Now just to play a uh, devil's advocate here, um, you know, personally, for me, uh, you know, until, I mean, so far, I've, I've not been a person who has been worried about privacy or, you know, data security. Um, I, I still use, I use WhatsApp, Dropbox, uh, Gmail. Uh, but that said, uh, a lot of people in my network, friends, family, um, have started talking about, you know, their, their worries, concerns about, you know, there's big players, Facebook and uh, <clears throat> others, you know, having access to their personal data. Um, I'm seeing serious concerns from a lot of people in my network. So I definitely see that demand increasing. Uh, from your data, I can see that you're expecting uh, 70 million people in the US. That's one in five consumers are likely to switch to paid. Um, wh where do you see the sector going, you know, a big picture? Do you see maybe five, 10 years from now, everything will be a paid service? I think what's going to happen, and I made a joke in 2014, I was on TV in uh, CTV breakfast television, and there was a privacy thing with a, con a panel. And I said, listen, if you're going to data mine me, give me a cut and then let me decide. Give me 10% of what you make from my data. That's legitimate. So, I mean, it would be great if you have two systems because it's, it's unfair for people to be data mined and the big guys make all the billions and you basically get the short end of the stick. So I think uh, there will be definitely for the businesses, it's all paid more and more. You know, you still have some tiny business that go for the free Google, but it's, 
it's going to be more and more rare. I think people, and it depends which countries, right? In the US, there's definitely a big awareness. The press is every day on people. I think in Canada, the awareness is a lot lower. And maybe in a few years, it will come. Um, it also depends on political events. Now you have the war in Ukraine, you have hacks. I think that consumers who, um, it's not about hiding or anything. It's about not being hacked. That's one thing. Uh, people, it's annoying if you know that somebody overseas knows where is your location every second and what you bought for lunch or which gym you go to. There is a portion. So I think there's going to be more and more people who will be willing to pay um, because at, at some point, everybody gets hacked or they know somebody who is hacked and then suddenly it wakes them up. So the more hacks we have, the more awareness is coming. So I don't, so I don't think everybody in the world will pay, but at least I would say a good portion in the US will move to paid service. I mean, we see it every day. For businesses, it will be more about the paid. And I think it's not just paid because you pay for Microsoft. I think if you have Office 365, like we do in our business, we never use their email service. We don't use Teams. We use the Excel and you know the Word document. So you may have people that say, listen, for my communication, I want top notch. For the rest, I love how Microsoft has their Word, Excel, et cetera. So they'll be compartmenting things. That's for businesses. For consumers, I think if you've been hacked once, then and if you're aware of something like secure, you're going to say, you know what, I'm just going to pay my seven bucks and have my privacy. Got it. So I think, uh, you know, if, uh, if people on the call or listening to this, uh, if you are interested in how we uh, put a valuation on Globex, uh, please check out our platform, researchfrc.com. You check for Globex data. You'll see our initiating report. You can see our valuation assumptions. Uh, we've been extremely conservative on how we arrived at our valuation and fair value estimate. So please do check that out. Uh, we have a few questions from our audience. One of them is um, the transition for small and business, uh, medium-sized businesses, SMBs, uh, from their current system to your platform. Is that how challenging, how do they need to have uh, extended resources, dedicated personnel to move to your system? That is an excellent question. I was hoping somebody was going to ask. So, because I want to address people say, yeah, but uh, GE is not going to switch to you. No, General Electric won't switch to us. But a small business, it's as easy as one, two, three. You sign up. We have literally explanation of how to migrate from G Suite or now we're adding these other services like Outlook or Hotmail, whatever you have, you migrate to us and it's extremely easy. And we made it in a way that you don't need an IT person. So it, it all does it automatically. So this is something that actually we're gonna create some videos on in the next four weeks. So if you're a small business and you're hosted with GoDaddy, that's a very common web hosting company, or if you have your exchange and you know you use Microsoft, you don't want to use Exchange anymore. You switch directly to us and you can maintain your domain. If you're a new business, you basically create your email with your domain with us. If you have already your emails, you migrate and you can migrate the entire history. So if you have emails that are lingering for the last two years, it does it for you automatically. You simply put a few simple settings and it does it for you. So it's super easy to migrate. We're going to do a huge push in May once we have the application um, all over. We have billboards on the NASDAQ building. We're on TV every week, by the way. We have a cybersecurity and privacy show on Newsmax and Fox Business every week in the US. So we're going to push this and explain to people, if you're a small business, you sign up. You go to our web mail, you follow the instruction, it's done. And if not, we always have great support, right? So we have our support system that can help you. We have video tutorial. I tell you, we're, it's a very easy system to use. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine, for that. Now, another group of people, or consumers, that are interested in encryption and privacy are consumers involved in illegal activities. Now, 
from the sound of it, it seems like your platform is uh, highly conducive or I will attract such consumers. How are you going to deal with this? Uh, have you already, have you seen anything so far on your platform? So if you're, see, that's why we don't offer a free product. When you pay, you already have the credit card trace. That's a start. If you're a telecom uh, client, then it's the, you know, if you're with a big telco, they, they do their, their screening. Hopefully they won't have too many criminals in there. We have never had any issue. But let's say if you're somebody up to no good, typically it would be spamming and we have limits. We have done some measures to limit the amount of spamming you can do, for example. That's one thing. I mean, we don't know the identity of everyone, but the fact that you have to pay with your credit card, that's already, it leaves a trace, right? Um, if you have unusual activity in your emails, uh, it, it, will, it will spike. We have... We don't know the content, but we have ways to check, right? So we can temporarily suspend your account, verify what's happening, contact you and say, hey, you know, sometime we had actually not too long ago, some people complain about a couple clients among the thousands that we have, mind you, a couple clients that were spamming. These are, they were spamming, you know, mostly political stuff. Um, and that's why we put limits uh, on how many people you can send email to, et cetera. And then we, we suspended and terminated those accounts. So in terms of criminals, I mean, if you have a Ben Laden who's using our system, I don't have an identity, but even Ben Laden needs a credit card to buy our product. That, that's basically our answer. And if we find out from the Swiss federal jurisdiction and a Swiss federal judge tells us to terminate or suspend an account because they have committed a penal crime in Switzerland or according to Swiss law, we will have to suspend that account. Makes sense. No, I, I guess the credit card aspect uh, alleviates a lot of concerns because you definitely will have a trail. Yeah, that's huge. That's a huge deterrent. Um, Absolutely. So yeah, the credit card is, is a big filter to start. Now, I know that uh, you're investing heavily in marketing, uh, obviously, you know, attracting as many consumers as possible in the next year or two will be definitely a number one priority. Um, and your marketing budget, um, maybe you can talk quickly about cash on hand, how, how long will that last? And also a key uh, metric for the, the, se the sector is the um, CAC, customer acquisition cost. Um, maybe you can talk a little bit about these points. Absolutely, gladly. So cash on hand, uh, 7.2 million Canadian dollar, roughly about 5.7 US dollars, no debt whatsoever, which was, by the way, an amazing thing that these bankers in New York really like. We have no convertible, no equity line, so no debt on our books whatsoever, no convertible stock. That is really critical to understand. Uh, we calculated, so what we did when we raised uh, quite a bit of money, about 12, 13 million dollars Canadian last year, uh, between fundraise option exercise by myself and management and all you know warrants and so forth. What we did is we kind of did the big bazooka uh, from July until let's say December. And the reason is, uh, so we have electronic billboards uh, in all over New York in the subway. We have our huge billboard in NASDAQ which we have extended until 2026 because we've got an amazing deal, uh, but we paid probably a quarter of the price that it should charge. We did a lot of media buy during the depth of COVID when media companies were really kind of starving for, uh, for cash and they were, you know, media was cheap back then in New York. Um, what happened is when you launch a new product, you need to do a big blitz, which we did. That brought us customers, reputation, and also uh, people were aware that we are a public company after all. So we have our ticker there as well on every single ad that we have. Uh, and it brought us a lot of customers. We have TV ads uh, on Fox, on uh, CNBC, we have on NTD network. So what we're planning to do, we've decided to scale back on that. So starting July of this year, our monthly, let's say awareness, like a, our monthly branding budget is going to go down by $200,000 a month, which is tremendous. We calculated that if we don't raise another dollar with existing money that we have, we would be profitable by mid 2024. 
Uh, we also have about, uh, let's say, seven, eight million dollars of warrants at higher price than today's stock coming due in 2023. Um, I myself have close to a million dollars of it, which I will exercise. These are Canadian dollars. Uh, so we're going to have at least a, a little bit more cash regardless. And on top of that, we have the uplisting with NASDAQ. So in terms of cash, we're extremely comfortable, especially that we have no debt. We can manage our expenses however we want. We have roughly, between recurring customer and new ones, a little over 5,000 customers right now. Um, at 10,000 customers, uh, we basically can be very uh, comfortably profitable. Uh, we expect to reach that more or less by the end of the year, unless certain events happen for more platforms that we're lining up, etc. It may be before. But we basically right now are on a very nice steady climb. We are going to do a bigger push targeting consumers and businesses. So the money that we spent before for the general branding, now we're going to focus towards targeted customers and businesses through digital marketing, uh, influencer programs, and so forth. Uh, for example, I forgot to mention, we have signed up with a social media platform, a big libertarian conservative platform. We're going to line up and probably integrate with them at the end of May. They plan to bring about a million people in their um, platform. This is content platform, not like Facebook, but basically discussions, etc. They have a few very famous people who also have their, their content in there. And we are going to give them the messenger for free. So instead of going to Facebook using Messenger, you're going to use Secure Messenger now in there. And then they have to convert a percentage of their user base into paid user. So there's no cost there of acquisition because they have to do all of it. Today, as we speak, literally, if we go straight in small scale and, and push through influencer, our cost of acquisition is about $100 US. Each customer brings us about 180 but remember, the businesses are going to bring us more. And even if you spend $100 to catch a business, a business has minimum 5 to 10 users. So the cost of acquisition goes down to $20 at that point. So I think we're going to lower our cost of acquisition over time down to $30, $40 uh, per acquisition. At Thank most. you, Berlin, uh, for that. Yeah, just to give uh, our audience some perspective on cost of acquisition, uh, CAC acquisition cost, uh, Netflix is at $45 per user. Um, the new uh, crypto sector uh, exchanges, exchange companies are paying $150 per uh, user. So you can uh, appreciate Elaine's comment on $100 uh, for him now, uh, potentially going down to $20 on the longer term. So, Elaine, I think uh, we are getting closer to our time. Um, I also want to point out to uh, everyone here that one of the things we look for in our due diligence all the time is uh, management skin in the game. Elaine himself owns more than 25% of Globex, I think 30 million shares. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but uh, that itself shows that management is working, uh, you know, they're interested in aligned with investors. So, Elaine, um, do you have any closing thoughts? Yes, uh, my ownership and also what our cash can buy in terms of customers, and then I think we're good. Uh, my ownership is I have about 30 million shares and then 15 million warrants and option. I will always make sure I have 20% or more of the company, even post NASDAQ listing, whenever that happens. Um, right now with our existing cash, and if we had nothing else, we probably can acquire at least 75 to 80,000 customers over the course of a couple of years if we really went heavy, but we are conserving our cash. And I think post financing NASDAQ, that's when we can really push uh, because we want to make sure that we always have a solid balance sheet. But just for some perspective, 100,000 users is going to bring us about 1.2, $1.3 million US per month. Uh, that's about $15 uh, million a year, uh, cost of running the company less than a million. So you're looking at a next net profit uh, with the existing cash um, of uh, $14 million. That's probably a much higher market cap than you see today in the market. Um, we have barely started the business until now. We were basically doing proof of concept. 
and the concept has been proven. And now we're gonna slowly increase the awareness, the marketing, the partnerships, and so forth. I have to say for our US viewers, they probably would understand this a lot. Uh, in the US, cybersecurity and privacy, data mining and so forth is in the front of a lot of people. I think more than any other country in the world for now. In Canada, I, I don't see that kind of mindset and that's why we're putting all our efforts in the US and with our partnerships with the other telecom, we may bring a third telecom provider this year or next as well. We're already working on it. So thanks for um, listening. Uh, we have our Twitter at Globex Data. You can always see our tweets. Uh, if you have any questions, um, you know, just just contact us, and um, you know, you can you can go to actually I don't know if you're from the U.S. or Canada. If you go to OTC Markets, you see our profile. There's our email on the CSC uh, Markets. You can see our email. If not, send uh, <clears throat> corporate at globexdatagroup.com. Thank you so much, Elena. I know that it was very useful for me. I, I learned a lot more, more things uh, today. I'm sure it was useful for our audience and everyone on the call. Thank you so much for taking time today. Uh, a recording will be uploaded on our YouTube channel shortly. Please ensure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and also sign up to be a member of our platform, researchfrc.com. You'll get alerts when we publish new reports. And of course, you'll be able to see our list of top picks. Thanks again and wish you all the best and stay safe.